little bit different of a video today. And of course, my little buddy comes trotting in the second he hears me. Huh, Chevy Wobbly. Well, come on, jump! Jump, little doggy! <laughs> what? Well, come on! Come on! Oh. Why, 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 why? Wags his tail and then doesn't jump, just looks at me. Like, well, dummy, pick me up. Uh, yeah, well, it depends on who, what the subscriber is, I guess, or who they are, and if they first come to my video, uh, on my YouTube videos, uh, I've made 723 videos so far over the last three years. Uh, this would be number 724. Um, but some people ask, well, how come you do electronic videos and, and not gun videos all the time? I said, well, number one, uh, guns are expensive. I do not buy guns all the time. Uh, I have more surplus equipment than I can handle here right now uh, compared to guns where I've pretty much done everything I can think of on most of them. And, uh, and the ones that are truly relics, you can't do anything with except clean them up a little bit and use them for a wall hanger. That's it. You can't shoot them. Uh, that's why eh, the 1887 Martini Henry uh, rifle, that is actually, it's the only one that's really in good enough shape to fire. Uh, still, I had to rethink uh, doing trying to shoot one of the 1878 ones because still there are a lot of pits in the barrel and I'm not really too sure about the steel that was made because a lot of those were, well, uh, made in Nepal. Uh, they're Gahedra rifles, which means they were made actually in a, an outside forge. So I have no idea what kind of steel that's in those barrels. Uh, the one made in 1887 is not that type, so uh, that actually is a better made uh, rifle. But uh, I do have, you know, guns around, uh, especially now these days. Uh, we haven't had any more riots here, uh, but of course, in Portland, Seattle, and whatever, they are still having riots up there. Uh, 6,000 people showed up at the last one, uh, according to all the federal troops that were going in. And uh, why were federal troops going in? Very simple. They were trying to get into a federal building. And if that happens, guess what? It's no longer the state's problem, it's a federal problem now. Anybody trying to break in there, that is not even a misdemeanor, that is a felony, trying to break in and destroy a federal building. So, even though it's in your state, it does not make any difference. It's still federal law. For the same reason that I have a collector and relics license, that's a federal firearms license. If someone tried to break into my house and steal my weapons, uh, there is a $250,000 fine associated with that and 10 years in prison. There are no questions about that at all. So, yeah, why do, that's another reason I have a federal firearms license uh, for collectors, collections and relics, because of that very reason. Um, it's basically a deterrent for people trying to come in. Of course, people are still going to try to steal, but when they see that stuck on the outside of my window of my house, unless they can't read or something else, uh, they pretty much know they better better watch what they're doing and they better watch what they're doing anyway because I keep loaded guns around here it's just not where my granddaughter can get a hold of them and uh, normally when she comes over she's no, not normally here at night so if she is then I lock them up but they're still where I can get to them and I lock them and get to the guns like uh, for instance well tell me when you get off uh, for instance <clears throat> I keep this 45 around. This is from the Rock Island Arsenal. 
If you notice, it has a compensator on it in front. That is not a silencer. That is a compensator to keep it keep the recoil down. And it's on top of my my gun cabinet. It on top of there it has a recess in it, so you can't even see it. So you don't know what's there. Uh, and I do keep loaded clips ready to go in for this one. Uh, and if I can't get a hold of this one quick enough, there's one other thing I can do. And my other weapon of choice. is my old double barrel 12 gauge and uh, if this doesn't stop an attacker nothing will uh, this happens to be a <coughs> Moitano model and uh, you know it's it's a very well, let me go this way it's a break open. So, break open, 12 gauge, put your shells in there, ready to go. Okay, but uh, yeah, double set triggers. So, yeah, so why don't I do it? Well, I have on this one, uh, just cleaning on it. It's never really had anything else. I bought this one actually from a friend of ours who is actually. Uh, he used to have a shooting range, but uh, after people decided they were going to start uh, committing suicide in his range, he closed it down. And uh, in dark now for some reason, I don't know why. And so he decided to close it down, but uh, he still does help widows uh, take care of. Uh, their husband's collections, if uh, you know, they don't want the guns around, but they know they're worth a lot of money, so they will go ahead, and he'll just go in, give them an assessment how much he thinks they'll be worth. And this was one of those guns. This one here, I paid. Uh, it's a nice shape. It was one that was actually made for. I think it was made for uh, Walmart or Sears, one of the others. I think no, Sears. I think is what it was, and. Uh, this is one of theirs, but yeah, so I paid $125 for it. So it's not really expensive, but it's a nice shotgun. But just like, you know, people are going to either watch this channel, either for whatever content I have, some don't care, some do, uh, some really just follow the electronics videos and not really the gun videos so much. Uh, I can understand that. Not everybody collects as much stuff as I do. Uh, I know other guys around here that actually collect a lot more than I do. Um, I do have a bunch of uh, military stuff here. In like, you know, the old Arc 5s and stuff like that. And this power supply, you know, that's going to go ahead and it's going to be used on one of them. And it's very soft aluminum also. But it's got, if you look at the back, you flip it up, and there's all the connections. And if you don't know what's what, it actually is stamped on the back. Uh, the line in the back would come in through here. So you use the AC right here, and then that's the ground. So AC, and then ground, and then these are a couple sets of 24 volt connections. So that's what that would be using. I have one other of these that's used on the other uh, ARC-5. But uh, yeah, I have stuff around here. Uh, Ron went ahead and today he went to some guy's, oh, another ham who had passed away and his wife, the same thing. He's, he's trying to get rid of a lot of the stuff he had piled into a, a shed. The shed itself was collapsing on the inside. The, the walls, you could tell the, the, the roof was water damaged and stuff. 
but he said most of this stuff was trashed inside. He picked up one little thing and a couple of knobs and that's about it. Uh, most of the major equipment was already trashed. Uh, so I was going to go with him, but I decided not to. Uh, I had to go in to get blood tests done today. So, And these are blood tests I have to have done for two different doctors, one for my cardiologist and one for my oncologist. And yes, I still have leukemia. Uh, it's just that it's not bad enough where they can treat it yet. So that's what the blood tests are for. Uh, your normal white cell count is between 8,000 to 10,500. My last test showed it to be 17,000, which is almost double normal, which my oncologist said, oh, well, that's still not that bad. And I said, well, when do you have to go ahead and, you know, start looking for treatment and stuff? He said, well, if it hits uh, above 50,000, he said, then we'll start going ahead and we'll try to figure out what kind of leukemia you have. Because at, right now, first, they thought I had CLL leukemia. And it turns out, my doctor said, after he reviewed the tests and stuff, he said, I do not have all of the markers for that disease. He said, although leukemia, there are many different types. And he said, the only way we can narrow it down is if you have to go ahead and we'll have to do a bone marrow test. That would be the only way to find out for sure what I have. So as of right now, they're not going to do anything. And it's just like another wait and see type routine. I don't go and see my oncologist again until September. I don't go and see my cardiologist till next year. So... As of right now, I'm doing fine. But anyway, I just wanted to say, yeah, that's why you will see different videos here. You won't see all gun videos, and you won't see all electronic videos. Uh, pretty much do things as we go, uh, as things show up, or as I have time to work on stuff. Uh, it's been too warm here lately to do anything out in the garage. Uh, I have stuff out there I have to do all as well. But, uh, so, anyhow, that's going to be it for now. Just wanted to go ahead and explain that, why and why I do things the way I do them here. And, uh, and that's going to be it. We'll talk to you guys later. Everybody, stay healthy.